I'm Cassidy, one of your Indianapolis Colts cheerleaders, and you're watching the Believe in Colts podcast. What's going on, NFL fans? I'm Lawrence Owen. With me, as usual, are my guys, Gerard Powers, Rodney McLeod, and, well, I mean, we had this past week of the NFL was crazy. Uh, and, and we can say that about every week, but there was a lot of big blown leads in this game. There was a lot of issues uh, where fans and analysts are talking about uh, the not the players play necessarily, but the referees play, you know, and, and how they are uh, conducting games and the, and the play calls that they're making. We're going to discuss that and much more here on this episode of Believe in Colts. Gerard, what was the biggest takeaway that you had this past weekend? Uh, me watching the Patriots Raiders game and thinking that the Patriots had the game in a bag and uh, them blowing a late lead and then ending it how they and I don't think I've ever seen that before where you know it's a tie game, guys are trying to lateral the ball back to try to go get a score and then boom you ladder it back to the wrong team he stiff arms your quarterback and goes for about 40 yards for a game winning touchdown which you felt like the Raiders were were done you know when you were watching it and it was five or you know six six games left so I meant six minutes left on the, in the clock so I just thought that was interesting and kind of just sums up with how the season been going uh, for the Patriots and how a lot of teams has been, you know, doing some unordinary, you know, things this this football season. Basketball is back. And Bet Online remains your number one source for all your sports betting needs this season. You'll always find the latest odds, team matchup info, player news, game trends at Bet Online. As your continued source for all sports wagering information, Bet Online features live betting, free contests, and giveaways all season long. Always the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports and events, whether that's NFL, NBA, NHL, MMA, tennis, boxing, even golf. Head to betonline.ag to join and receive your 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure to use the promo code BELIEVE to receive your rewards. Bet online, where the game starts. Absolutely. Rodney, he just got done talking about a play uh, where something happens, you just it comes out of nowhere. It, it, it does not, it, you know, catches you completely by surprise. Has there ever, you ever been part of a play where something like that has happened, where you, just something completely takes you by surprise and just comes out of left field and you didn't see something like that happen? No, I haven't been a part of anything like that, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> you know, so. I, I don't really have any uh, memories, thank God, of anything like that. Okay, good, good. Um, well, all right. Uh, there's an, uh, a few games in this game or this past week that I think that uh, deserve to be talked about. Um, obviously, we discussed, as you talked about, the Raiders come back against the Patriots, uh, the Bengals. Mm. put a thumping there on the Buccaneers, 34-23. What was your thoughts about that game and and, and how that ends up? And, and what's going on with Buccaneers and Tom Brady? I don't know. Uh, I think it's some – I don't want to say it's some division going in the locker room, but, I mean, it's just some things that when you watch them play that you just don't understand why they keep losing games the way that they're losing it. Uh, I mean, they're up 17, you know, at half, I believe, you know, and normally if Tom Brady – is the is leading your team and he has a halftime lead of 17 points you're not your your chance of chances of coming back winning that game uh is 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 slim to none and for the Bengals to you know come back and win by a couple scores kind of lets you know like what in the world is going on and I want to say in the second half you know two interceptions and two fumbles by Tom Brady or, or something like that that's just you know we we just not used to seeing Tom play you know that style of football the way that he's been playing it so uh Bengals are finding ways to win man and they're staying hot Joe Burrow you know is doing his thing trying to uh up his odds and and getting in that MVP race and I mean you just got to tip your hat for them young guys over there keep finding ways to win absolutely um here's a here's a big thing uh the the Jaguars upended the Cowboys 
in over. There was a bunch of overtime games, by the way, this week. Jaguars beat the Cowboys 40 to 34. I want to say the Cowboys was up big at one point as well. You wow. Know, and, and blows the and lead. So, scores. yeah. And then, well, I mean, so we, we, I definitely want to get a little bit focused in on, on the, on the AFC here because, uh, all these, all, all the AFC South teams had had very interesting games this week. When, when you're looking at the Jaguars, Cowboys, that was a high scoring game. The Texans took the Chiefs. Uh, mm-hmm. They were never out of that game either. You know, they lost by less than a touchdown. And then Tennessee Chargers, you know, they lost oh, by yeah. a field goal, you know, in a 14 17 game. Very, very tight. All these games. And of course, the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, lost by a field goal in overtime, but this this is interesting football. This is this is you're you're looking at this going from week to week to week. You don't really know who's the true dominant team out there, especially in the AFC. Is is that right? No, I think you're right. Uh, I mean, we've been talking about it all season. I remember like week six, week seven, week eight. And it was just like everybody's like a game or two out from one another with with leading their division or top seed here, top seed there, whatever the case may be. And it just it, it keeps proving proving us right that you know week to week every team in the NFL can be beat. No matter if you're the Eagles that's having to find a way to beat Chicago Bears in a last second type type situation, or you know you're the uh, another team in a, a similar situation. I think everybody in the NFL can get beat week to week if you're not ready to play. Yeah. Yeah. I think what you're saying is uh, playoff football, you know, coming down to these last four weeks and people are trying to make their make that push, make that run, solidify uh, and secure a, a, a seat at the at the dance. And so that that raises your the level of competition right and creates a sense of urgency from the entire league i feel like and and especially you know those those teams who are even you know in the playoff picture currently or or those teams like a jacksonville or uh like a a a raiders who are sitting in the hunt right and and kind of uh have to you know play it out and and really they're in playoff mode as gerard knows like Mm -hmm. you you know you, you get to that point where you know, you got to draw that line in the sand and you know, we have no more room for air uh, playoff start now. And so let's win out and see how it goes. And and you see uh, teams uh, gaining momentum and you could see just a shift in energy and belief. And, and I think one one team that you can point to is the Detroit Lions. I was just about to say they might be the hottest team in the NFL right now. Yeah, that's that's I mean, definitely you, you start one and six and now you're seven and seven, you know, in the last stretch of the league. I mean, yeah. people can say what they want to say about Detroit and you know, everybody was making fun of them that first part of the season, but these guys have found themselves in position to make the playoffs and that's what you want, you know, as a player is to be playing for something in December. You want to be playing where where the games mean something in December and they're here and uh it, it's kind of cool to see that transformation uh from the start of the season and see how they got better from week to week and you know I got to tip my hat off to Jared Goff Jared Goff has had a damn good year this year and there's not too many people really talking about it no Mm -hmm. they they're they're not I mean he's kind of Jared Goff is kind of in that same conversation of you know um you know middling quarterbacks right you know guys that you don't see as a franchise guy but at the same time uh you know, not a terrible quarterback, but as you said, he's he's having a great, great year uh, overall. It's 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 just kind of funny how you know uh, our perceptions of of a person can be affected by history. You know, yeah, you gotta remember, golf made it. Him and his team has made it to a Super Bowl before. You know, yeah. I mean, come yeah. on, it's it's not like he's a bad quarterback, but. It's just like Kirk Cousins, you know, he's he's a good quarterback overall, you know. It's just we take what he has done in the past and just kind of flat him out in, in, in a specific area w- with the rest of the quarterbacks 
that uh, have been in that situation. I want to talk about two teams, the Jaguars and the Titans, who are on two completely different trajectories right now. The Titans have lost four straight, and the Jaguars have won the last three out of four games. Um, Do you think that that, uh, the Jaguars have a shot at taking this AFC South? Yeah, I mean, week to week, yeah. I mean, they, they got just as good a shot as Tennessee trying to hold on to it, you know. Um, like you said, you look at the trajectory and, you know, we, we always thought Jacksonville had a, you know, a talented young roster uh, from the start of the season. You know, we've been saying that, you know, that this is not the same old Jacksonville. Like, these guys can play. And, uh, and it seems like they just stayed the course. Like they had a rough part in the middle. Uh, but seem like they stayed the course and they're starting to see some of the benefits of it. I think Trevor Lawrence is starting to really establish himself as uh, I'm not going to give him the, the, I guess the title of saying one of the top quarterbacks, but one of the better uh, quarterbacks with, with how he's been playing. I mean, he's been playing like you expected a top, you know, picking a draft to play and, you know, got a lot of young guys that believe in him and a young core that believe in the coaching staff and the team and the way the Titans are going. I mean, right now they can't block a soul. Uh, whatever their their issues is up front, uh, if they don't figure it out and not able to run the ball, I think, I think at one point, you know, I, I'm good friends with some of the Titans' former players, and uh, they were complaining that, you know, Derrick Henry only had like 15, 16 opportunities you know, to really do something. And we all know that if Derrick Henry is not the the centerpiece of the offense getting touch after touch, that they, they can't, you know, be that that good on offense just because they don't have a true number one receiver and you're not expecting Tannehill to go and light a defense up for 300 or 400 yards. I mean, they got to have that run game going. And until they figure out that O-line issue, man, uh, you know, they're, they're going to they're gonna continue to struggle uh, because that's that's how they've been making their money is with the O-line and the running game. Absolutely. Yeah, Jacksonville, you know, Trevor Lawrence, the quarterback play, uh, probably AFC player of the month, you know, mm-hmm. just because uh, of what he's been able to do. And I think, you know, you got to credit the, the, the pieces that they surrounded him with, you know, going out and getting a tight end like Evan Ingram, going out mm-hmm. and getting Christian Kirk. Like they all are – very they're very skilled in different ways and it's effective you have christian kirk who's a great underneath Shit, route yeah. runner yeah then you have a tay jones who can stretch the field you have uh marvin jones who has experience that can you know catch the ball across the middle uh catch contested throws and never ingram can kind of do it all and then you tie in etn i mean you know when we play them that was obvious to us we're like I mean, I don't know about any other like offenses, but Jacksonville, like Got some they weapons. could go. Yeah, they could go. And it's not the Jacksonville of old that you would expect. And and now, you know, the defense is playing well. Um, you know, I think uh Jenkins, man, he had an incredible day. Probably, I mean, that's that's like some unreal run realistic stats that he uh that he put out that you just fantasize about the safety, 18 tackles two INTs, one pick six. I mean, it was ridiculous. But to seal the game, uh, to go against, you know, the Cowboys who, you know, are arguably one of the better NFC teams Mm -hmm. and to walk away with a win in that facet was huge for them. And I'm mad at myself for not picking Jaguars two weeks ago versus the Titans because I said it and then I and then I I backpedaled out of it. Um, But I just had this feeling that, you know Jacksonville, the, the way that they look and how I view Tennessee, I felt like they uh, they were the better team at this point in time. So it's going to be interesting to see how how it finishes out. Do they have enough? It's a huge game on Thursday night ahead with Jacksonville and the Jets. I told you the Jets. I didn't know. <laughs> and this you is did. this is their their fate is like <laughs> is at risk right now. Like the the their their season stands on this game. Both teams really so. They're both fighting for their lives, man. It's probably going to be a, a hell of a game. Absolutely. Um, now, last year, I, I was saying last year, the Jacksonville Jaguars had talent across the board. They just weren't playing as a unit, you know. And then this year, it seemed like, you know, as the year went on, the more and more they played as a unit. And that and that's that that makes a lot of difference uh, uh, for games. On, on, you know, it, and the coaching. 
coaching yeah. staff as well. Coaching. When you get mm-hmm. Doug Peterson Doug e. and, you know, Mike Caldwell at D.C. and guys that come from winning backgrounds, winning cultures. I mean, they know how to get a locker room right. They know how to get young players in order and, and playing the way that they should be playing. And like I said, when you got a young team, you know, it's just a matter of time. You know, as long as everybody's on the same page, it's just a matter of time until they break that mm-hmm. that that ice. And, uh, and and it's usually with reps. It's usually with the more play time, the more games and experience that they get, the more comfortable these guys are, are, are starting to, you know, become within themselves. So I think you're seeing a Jacksonville team with some young, you know, up and coming superstars who now believe that they belong in this league and they can have success in this league. All right, so uh, last week, Gerard and I talked about uh, our picks for, you know, who who could be MVP. I think it was pretty well unanimous that uh, we had Jalen Hurts, uh, and then Patrick Pat, Mahomes yeah. was right there. And then at the end of the show, we were talking about Justin Jefferson because he's, you know, on track to get about 2,000 yards receiving, which no one's ever done before. Uh, who Who would be your pick right now? Rodney. I would have to say Jalen Hurts, uh, best team in the NFL, best quarterback in the league right now, can do it throwing the ball uh, or on the ground. Uh, he just finds a way to get it done for his team. And I think he's demonstrated that countless times this season. And unfortunately, we've been on the clip, you know, uh, you know, with the Colts and seeing how, man, you know, we, we took away – uh, his throwing abilities but you know one thing that he's also gifted at is is being able to run the ball now it's come back to to haunt them you know in a in a very um major way right with this now shoulder injury that he's dealing mm-hmm. with and praying that he's able to make a, a speedy recovery but you know that's that is going to uh now uh kind of control the way that they use him moving forward I would say uh, they have to be very mindful of that, but I, I think he's very deserving of the MVP. And you know, I, I would be upset if he if he didn't win. Um, he he deserves it, man. I, I know him outside the game and how hard he works, and to see it all on display this year um, is a uh, is a pleasure to watch. Now that we're all here together and, well, but a couple defensive guys uh, sitting here talking football, I want to go, who is your pick for defensive player of the year so far this season, Gerard? Uh, I would probably have to go with Micah Parsons. Uh, just from start to finish, the, the playmaking ability, the game-changing type plays that he make, uh last year he had a all i mean he's been consistent i mean it's not like it's been a drop off since he's been in the league it seems like he just continues to get better year after year um but i think i think it's just more so his game changing ability to to especially step up in the big games and be the the game record that he is uh if i had to put somebody at the forefront from the defensive <coughs> perspective uh it'll probably be michael parsons as of now rodney yeah, I would I would say uh, Parsons is definitely in that conversation because of, uh, as you said, is his playmaking ability. Uh, whenever Dallas needs a play, like he's in the frame, um, you know, and so it's his motor is ridiculous. You know, he he's he's skilled to rush the passer, drop back in coverage. You know, he might get a pass break up on the tight end, man. Like he can pretty much do it all. Uh, but I would also say Bosa, uh, I say Bosa San Fran, too. and yep. you know, being able to uh, be a part of the number one defense in probably every statistical category, and knowing that how dominant he is up front uh, for that group, uh, I think he might be one or two sack leaders. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, you have to—they're probably one A and one B uh, right now, so. The, those are the, that's probably my um my vote. Especially I like both. Yeah, Bosa can pass rush and ru- you know run a game. He, he controls that yeah. line of scrimmage yeah. well. Unblockable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I agree with both of your guys' picks. I like both of them. Um, my pick is Bosa right now, uh, but I do want to drop a name in there. Uh, that we talk, you know, San Francisco's got a really good defense. They got some players around there that that are very very good. 
And, you know, uh, the Cowboys, they got a couple guys over there that are, you know, like Tank Johnson and stuff like that as well. Or Tank Lawrence, sorry, not not Johnson. Yeah. Um, I thought we were going back. Two completely different yeah, I people. Say, yeah, that's, that's, that's a, that was a while ago. <laughs> yeah, that, well, you know, my age. Uh, <laughs> I want to talk. I, I do want to throw a hat in. Keep an eye on Matt Judon. That yeah, guy having a hell of a year. Hell oh, yeah. All, all pro year type. Yep. Mm, oh, yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. mean. <laughs> yeah, he's been, mean man been watching him there's games where he completely takes over that game you know where the offense can do nothing of, I mean we all remember the Colts and Patriots game and he was in the backfield 90% of the time you know yeah. so uh, he, he is a guy where where you know there, there's a lot of a, a, a lot of situations where you know you always have to have your eyes over there where is number nine Right. Yeah. Find the red sleeves, man. Find the red <laughs> sleeves. <laughs> Absolutely. True. Absolutely. All right. I think that's going to do it for uh, this uh, episode of Believe in Colts as we went over uh, week 16 of the NFL season. I'm Lawrence Owen. That is Gerard Powers and Rodney McLeod. This was Believe in Colts brought to you by Bet Online. And as usual, go Colts. Do you believe? 